South Africans will be spoiled for choice in the coming 2024 elections as more and more political formations aim to contest the country's 2024 general election. And one more political party led by former Mkonto Wesizwe, Chief of Military Intelligence and retired Chief of Defense Intelligence, uh, General uh, Maumela Mojo Mutau uh, and others will be launching their party next week. Now, these former ANC members say that the ruling party has lost its way and it's abandoned its cause when it adopted a neoliberal uh, policy approach. Now, this adds to the number of new political formations, including the African uh, Congress for Transformation, led by Isma Khashule, and the African Radical Economic Transformation Alliance, led by Karl Niehaus. Professor Kialibucha Mapunye, who is Professor of African Politics in the Department of Political Sciences at UNISA, joins us now to discuss uh, this matter and what it actually means for South Africa. Uh, Prof, good morning. Thanks so much for your time. Good morning, Sakina. Thank you for having me and good morning to the viewers. So, Prof, one more political party to add to the shopping list of uh, parties that will be on the ballot uh, to choose from for next year's general election. What do you make, though, of the growing number of political parties or formations that are aiming to contest the election? Sakina, I like your choice of uh, words uh, by saying, using the phrase shopping list, because that's what it is, isn't it? Democracy is about choice and the more variety you have, perhaps that is good for democracy. So to that extent, yes, one more party. Um, currently, the 552 or so political parties that are registered, um, Sakina, it means one more party. We, uh, you, somebody can ask, do South Africans need all these parties? And what is it actually uh, in it for uh, these new parties that are coming in? Um, couldn't uh, we probably be looking at what causes, you know, uh, uh, people to create new parties? I suppose this is where the, the, the main debate is, Sakina. And the big question is, one more party, what difference is it going to make? And how is it going to convince the voters come 2024 that yes we are the party that actually should be voted for and finally that's the one that's going to to win uh, and i suppose that's the where the whole issue is sakina so prof you said you know this uh, shopping list uh, offers a choice uh, which is of course uh, what democracy is about to the electorate but what sort of choices do they actually offer uh, you know, you look at the number of political parties that have sprang up in the last year alone, uh, then there are obviously those that we probably don't even know about or aren't too keenly aware of. Uh, you look at the Nazareth Baptist Church, also known as the Shembe Church, announcing that uh, they've been working on a political party for the past three years, uh, the time to rise. And um, you also have other formations like Build One SA, Rise Mzansi, and as I said, many others that we might not even even know about as yet uh, again what sort of choice does this provide for the voter and could it possibly be that that would only lead to further confusion for the electorate one could actually look at it uh, from two angles it could one uh, could say uh, optimistically uh, this uh, the formation of new parties could lead to confusion because the voters might actually find that there are just too many parties, uh, too much choice, if one can put it that way. And perhaps that's another debate that we, we can ha have. However, you and I, Sakina, know quite very well where this country is coming from, where uh, even the, the type of, uh, you know, the, the talk about new parties, uh, one could be sent to jail or to be incarcerated in some island just for daring to say that they want to form a new political party. So I suppose uh, it's about looking at it also from the optimistic side to say, uh, for, if, for as long as South Africans, the voters, the citizens out there, are not happy about the what the current political party uh, parties that are registered is um, you know uh, providing whatever they want whether it's services whether it's accountability which many um, of us have said is lacking in south africa whether it is an a, a dissatisfactory you know political system 
however you might look at it, then to that extent, there is a, a, you know, a, a question to be made around choice. The choice is around a number of things. You have mentioned the shame uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, party. In this case, one could say it's an issue-based you know, party whereby it is actually focusing mostly at the religious aspect, but maybe the spiritual aspect, which they might say is lacking or needs to be added. Then you look at other parties that might be looking at a variety of other issues. The issue around land, she keeps coming uh, up in many, you know, of these parties that are being formed, including the question of national cohesion and so on. But if you ask me, uh, Sakina, I think the more the merrier, because if you limit uh, these parties, we probably will go back to the previous regime before 1994, where people were told you cannot form a political party, even if you do do the, uh, form that party, we, we are going to be incarcerated. So it's, a, it's about the, the balancing, you know, the, the, the needs of this liberal democracy that was established in uh, after the 27th April 1994. Uh, that being said, though, um, Prof, if we look at what happened in uh, 2019 uh, with that election, and what it showed was uh, that uh, there were much fewer voters, uh, the voter turnout uh, was lower. So uh, the parties may be there, they may be registered, but are they actually persuading the electorate to come out and vote? Uh, so in other words, are they actually making a difference in terms of the offering, the alternatives that they offer to the electorate? Uh, there's normally two, in a liberal uh, democracy system, there's normally two uh, sides of these political parties. The, uh, the incumbent no. or the governing party, some call it the ruling party, and of course the opposition. Now. The opposition is supposed to op uh, to provide a viable alternative, and it's supposed to be a consistent opposition. All things remaining the same. However, normally in a situation like this one in South Africa, you find that you've got uh, you know predominant parties. For instance, the African National Congress, the DA, maybe the EFF, and the, uh, depending where you are look at uh, the IFP and so on. But uh, you find that these three or four political parties. Uh, sometimes find it very, very difficult, or the, the, the citizens, the voters, find it very, very difficult to align themselves with the political manifestos of these parties. So the question that have these parties managed to uh, convince the, the, the voters, since 1994, many have, have managed, but over the years we have seen declining voter you know, turnout, declining you know, voter support for the, for, for, the, the, for the dominant parties. And therein lies the question, are the voters satisfied with the current menu of political parties that they have? The answer clearly, according to South African voters and citizens, is, is, is no. Hence, now they opt for uh, um, 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 creating new parties. But also, we must also be careful, Sakina. There's also the um, uh, unhappiness of um, the inter-party inter you know, issues, whereby some people inside yeah. certain parties get very unhappy, and then, of course, they, 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 they choose to form political parties and leave their, their original parties. Yeah. We're going to have to leave it there, unfortunately, Prof. Thanks so much for your time.